So Jackson, you're telling me I can learn Old Norse? It's true, Captain Luke Amadeus Ranieri of the famous or infamous YouTube channel Scorpio Martianus and Polymathy. Infamous if you heard me sing. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm Old Norse Specialist Jackson Crawford, and uh, this is part of a series that Luke and I are doing about, well, introducing each other to the languages that we most uh, diligently work with. Mm -hmm. So this one is about Old Norse and uh, what someone who has a little bit of a language background, well, more than a little bit, but potentially just a little bit of language background, uh, might want to know about Old Norse before jumping in. Yeah, so all right, let's talk about this. Uh, start from the uh, 20,000 feet angle, which is actually comparable to our current altitude. So yeah, this is like <laughs> 75. Yeah, it's not <laughs> but um, so the uh, kind of bird's eye view of it, the raven's eye view hmm. uh, of this language. Yeah, where they, where do they go? Yeah, what am I looking at? So um, let's do, there's just two ways to look at it. The linguist perspective of, you know, which kind of language group it fits yeah. into. And, you know, um, what kind of, uh, is it, you know, Moraic or, you know, Mor Mora time, those kinds of things. But maybe more of a layman thing. Right. What would you compare it to as, as far as the more well-known modern languages? Mm -hmm. In difficulty, I would place it uh, more difficult than German, more difficult than Latin, probably about as difficult as ancient Greek or Russian. Hmm, that's interesting. So why more difficult than Latin? Because there's so much umlaut. That is, vowels are affected by other vowels in the word and are mutated by them. But sometimes the vowel that has caused the mutation has disappeared. So you have to learn places where vowels will mutate. Hmm. There's examples of this that are kind of fossilized in English in many common important words. Man, men, that's a fossilized mm -hmm. example of umlaut in English. Foot, feet, fossilized example of umlaut in English. In Old Norse, those are active processes that you can anticipate, but you have to know mm. where to anticipate them, and you have to know which mutation is caused where. Is vatter, or uh, vatten, I'm sorry, yeah, vatten a good example? Yeah, water. vatten means water, and in uh -huh. the plural, vatten. Right, but the genitive plural, the possessive plural. It's vatna, uh -huh. so we go back. And the reason that it changes in the, the, the regular, or the nominative plural, is that there was a U that rounded the A, mm -hmm. that, that was in the ending once upon a time. The U is dropped, but the rounding effect is still there. That's right. And like I demonstrated in that IPA video a little while back, uh, the rounding means we're rounding of the lips, literally mm -hmm. the rounding of the mm -hmm. shape of the front of the mouth. Well, just watch uh, both of us say, ball. I caught a ball. Caught. Yeah. Caught. Yeah, just watch our mouths. <laughs> right. yeah, let's, you, yeah, do you do it? Caught. Caught. Yeah, it's different. Um, yeah, caught a ball. Yeah. It's rounded. Right. So anyway, mm -hmm. button is, is, is rounded. And probably I don't even say it as rounded as I could because this rounded vowel is barely in my dialect of English. Hmm. But uh, anyway, it's yeah. so, so these, these mu mutation phenomena are a big part of learning Old Norse. And they can be discouraging for early learners. Believe me, I know. I've taught this English for a long time. Yeah. But once you understand what the patterns are and once you realize they are predictable, it's not so bad. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, just watching um, a few of your videos, which are excellent. By the way, if you want to learn Old Norse, Jackson Crawford on his channel, eponymously named, <laughs> uh, has his outstanding course that uh, he's been releasing, um, I guess it's been every few weeks, right? A new uh, one's been coming out. There's no schedule to it. Yeah, but they've been, uh, if you just watched the ones already there, you're going to get an outstanding understanding of the grammar uh, of Old Norse and these exact things, which are, are vital. I try. Yeah. I mean, I, I well, and I try to break it down to things you're going to see early and frequent. Yeah. Because you can't start, <laughs> so many, I think, this is something we, we can talk about in terms of language te teaching philosophy is so many textbooks and instructors start with what's easy when you're not going to see what's easy very much. Right. right. You're going to get like, a list of about 20 or 30 words. Like, yeah. well, that's what you did. And I also do, I think, in lesson one. Yeah, you, sure. You take the, just the prepositions and stuff. Just memorize these because you're they're not going to change. Right. Like, like know that. But but in terms of yeah. grammar, don't start with just what's easy. Start with what's frequent. And mm. so that's what I try to do is I introduce you to what you can see all the time on every page and every sentence because that's what it takes to get to know the language. Yeah, I think so too. Okay, so Old Norse uh, is harder. It's about as hard as ancient Greek. That's I think it's because about ancient right. Greek's in a different alphabet too. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so but I that, still think it's a, I, think, I, just, I still think it's a fair comparison to someone who's, yeah. who's done a lot of Greek. Mm. Um, you know, Greek is harder in some respects because, like, at least impressionistically for me, I always felt like I learned one verb, and what I learned about how one verb inflected never transferred any other verbs. Like, great, this one does. No, there's totally one different. regular verb in ancient Greek. Yeah, I know. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. That's it. At least in Old Norse, there's patterns that you pick yeah. up. Um, so that kind of balances out the alphabet thing. And by the way, someone might say, well, but Old Norse says he's a different alphabet, the runes. But in fact, none of the literature is written in runes, right? The sagas, the eddas, yeah. this is all written in the Roman alphabet. Exactly. Runes are a cool adjunct to learning Old Norse, but you're reading, you know, short inscriptions on a stone. It's not literature. Yeah. And that's, I think, that's probably important too, uh, be, as far as like, because uh, modern languages, it's pretty easy to get some kind of sense of modern culture without doing you know, at worst, people think of, you know, the Swedish chef from when as we were talking about in the Scandinavian uh, languages video, mm. they'll think of maybe that as like a, some stereotype. But when it comes to ancient languages, people have bizarre stereotypes sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, it goes for Greek and Latin, especially Old Norse. So I think as you rightly and frequently emphasize, it's it's uh, it's important to uh, mention that, you know, Old Norse is fundamentally based on the literature, which is otherwise called Old, old Icelandic. Yes, because from, the so yeah. so. Yeah, let me define my terms a little bit here. Yeah. So, the Germanic languages, which include, of course, English, German, Dutch, and the West Germanic branch, uh, are breaking up in, say, the first half of the first millennium AD. Mm. All right, so by the end of the first half of the first millennium AD, say the 800s, 900s AD, mm -hmm. we can already see differences between East Scandinavian and West Scandinavian, or East Norse and West Norse. Mm. So Old Norse is developing from the earlier stage of Norse Germanic languages that we call Proto-Norse, actually pretty well attested in runic inscriptions, mm -hmm. starting in about AD 150, which one you could still kind of call it Proto-Germanic, to about 700. Old Norse, is, we start speaking of Old Norse in about 700 AD because this is when all the Uma phenomena take effect, mm -hmm. really change word length, change a lot of the vowels. And then typically we speak of Old Norse on the continent until about 1380, about the Black Death and in Iceland until about 1540, so about the Reformation. Hmm. However, already in the period when our literature starts to be written, so 1100s, 1200s, we can see noticeable dialectical differences between Icelandic, Norwegian, which are in the West group, and Swedish and Danish, which are in the East group. Mm -hmm. But almost all of the original vernacular literature that's preserved is in Icelandic. Hmm. So there's these minor differences between Old West Norse, Old East Norse, between Norwegian and Icelandic, between Swedish and Danish. But it still makes sense in every textbook and program that I could possibly conceive of focuses on Old Icelandic as yeah. sort of the standard Old Norse that you learn. And then if you want to learn to read something in Old Swedish, it's not a ton out there, but mm -hmm. then you learn it as sort of like some modifications of Old Icelandic. Yeah. So our classical basis form of Old Norse is Old Icelandic and about the 1200s AD. That's when most of the sagas and Eddas are written down. Now that's a really big deal in these uh, ancient languages, I think, too. The way you describe that, it sounds a lot like ancient Greek, where in the classical Greek period of the 5th century BC, there's Doric, there's Aeolic, mm. there's uh, Ionic, and there is some literature in them, sometimes a fair amount in some cases. Yeah, but you uh, learn Attic. But Attic is yeah. the standard. Uh, so Old Icelandic is the standard uh, there to kind of like, where most of the literature is written in a Koine Attic version in Greek and yeah. uh, in the uh, certainly the West Old Norse. Someone says, I don't want to learn Old Icelandic, I want to learn Old Swedish. And I said, well, there's no course in Old Swedish, right? Learn Old Icelandic, and if you are writing a novel or something set in Sweden, then you start saying, okay, what's a little bit different about Old Swedish from Old Icelandic? It'd be like learning there's, Doric, Greek. Yeah, really. there's no course in Doric. Well, not, I, I don't know, maybe someone did that once, but it's not, that it's that not likely. It'd be cool. <laughs> but I don't, it's, yeah. it's just an, it lacks practical value. Um, also for the teacher, because the teacher has to then, yeah. or the uh, whoever's composing the book would have to comp write stuff in it. Yeah, you have so, to have some kind of basis, and Old Icelandic yeah. just makes sense. Yeah. Um, I wanted to talk about one thing. You you, you had a question. I let, let me come back to that if I can, because I don't want this video to go too long. I wanted to point one thing out about learning Old Norse. Old Norse 
and Old English were probably still reasonably mutually intelligible a thousand years ago. Mm. As you our, demonstrated with our friend Simon, Simon Roper. Roper. Yeah. Um, the languages are still close enough that native English vocabulary tends to give you a pretty good basis for guessing Old Norse vocabulary that's cognate with it, mm. if you know a few simple rules. Let me give you a pattern and see if you can continue it. Ooh, cool. All right, let me, I'll do this a few times and see if, see if, see if you can follow. I'm sure you can. It's fun. So English stone is Old Norse stain. Mm -hmm. English home, the root is Old Norse hain. Okay. Hain mutter with a grammatical ending. Mm -hmm. So English bone is Old Norse bane. Is yep. it bane nut? Bane. That's no, bane. So, okay. I, mean, I mean, you can guess the root. Is it neuter? Yeah, it's neuter. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah. Hammer is masculine, <laughs> hence, the, hence the extra R. Cool. Okay, all right. Give me another. English weather is uh -huh. Old Norse weather. <laughs> okay. All right, that's not Good. too hard, right? Yeah. Um, English, oh, let's see, what's another fairly transparent one? I mean, you already see where I'm going with this. I do. So if I say English, uh, this is, uh, this is something I'm, I'm all too famous for on my channels. I can, can never think of examples when I need them, right? Well, no, uh, give, what was it? Give the give the, give the the lake a gift. What was it? <laughs> give the lake a gift. I forget what it was. Okay, was W's, it, was W's or V's. Case? W's or V's, right? W's or V's. Okay, W's right. or V's. Got okay, it. But, there's an interesting, <laughs> but there's an interesting exception to this. So, sword is fair. Ah, so right? You can't necessarily guess the vowel from English, I guess. Okay, but here's an interesting exception before O's and U's. Uh-huh. The W or V disappears. Hence, Old English Woden, Old Norse Odin. Uh huh, yeah. Right? So, English word, Old Norse Orth, oh. English wolf, the Norse root would be Ulf. Ulf, yeah. Ul Ulver, right? Yep, it's Ulver because it's masculine. Right? Okay, Ulver. Yeah. So, you can at least, now I'm not saying that you're necessarily, you know, it's, it's unlikely you're going to get it in a time machine and have to go back to, you know, Iceland. 900 years ago, and uh, guess what vocabulary is. Although this has sometimes worked for me in conversation in Icelandic. Mm. Um, <laughs> random fact. Um, but it means that when you're reading, if you maintain a little bit of confidence in yourself, you don't necessarily, the first thing you have to do is not necessarily go to the dictionary. It's mm. once you pick up on some of these patterns, it's guess. And I would always have students guess. I'd say, what do you think that means? Think That's about awesome. it. awesome. Right, because it, it's, it's actually, once you pick up some of these patterns, A-O. Mm. W V, um, it's not that hard to figure out. Like we were talking about in um, the video we did, where you uh, were asking me about you know learn languages, ancient languages in more modern way. I think that's a very modern way because this <laughs> is when we were talking about oh doing a cipher from Spanish to Italian to kind of turn cuervo into corvo. Yeah, yeah. Uh, doing that, that's a that's a something that people who learn and speak modern languages do all the time. Yeah, and, so by the, and guessing instead of using the dictionary. And by the way, when I was teaching modern Icelandic and modern Norwegian, you know, students when I was trying to get students to speak these languages, they always want to, you know, switch back to English so they didn't know a word and say. I don't care, say the English word, but say it in Norse, Norwegian Norse. grammar. Or Norwegian, yeah. Right, like yeah. talk about trucken, if you don't know what the word for truck is, yeah. right? Say, t you know, tell me about truckendine. <laughs> Especially because <laughs> that's literally what happens to, with languages. When neologisms yeah. are borrowed from different languages, Yeah. Uh, they use a different so, form, yeah. So you can still, in a, in a sense, you can figure out Old Norse mm. to, to a degree by, by understanding these, these uh, mm. You know, or, or another one is, is here, here's, here's one where I can keep going with some examples, Please amazingly think. enough. All right. So, ride is Old Norse, riva. Drive is Old Norse, driva. 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 I'm sorry, well, I was thinking of the, the, I was just like. I was just going for the vowel. Yeah. I was focusing, well, I should have thought of the consonant. I was thinking like, oh, it, it's, it's da to a the. And I was like, yeah. I just thought that was fun. Ice yeah. is Old Norse. East, East, yeah. Eastland, Eastland, Iceland. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. That's easy. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's not an easy language, mostly because of those vowel mutations and because it is highly inflected. But there's a familiarity there to it too, mm. and uh, I think that it's it's actually quite approachable. And with some of the resources that I'll put on screen here, some videos, some books, and things like that, uh, I think that uh, you too can approach it. And of course, keep your eye out. There may be more resources even that are currently available, available not too distant in the future. Who knows what I'm talking about? But the future is unknowable. That's right. fantastic.
Yeah. Well, well, thank you for uh, having me on, Jackson, to talk about it. Always a pleasure. And uh, from beautiful Colorado, we're wishing you all the best. Well, okay.